Hi, and welcome to Taking Care of Business. I'm your host, Julie Bizanet, and today we're coming from the Hunters Bay Radio Satellite Studios in Bracebridge. And joining me today is Elka Schultz, um, artist, registered psychotherapist, EMDR. I mean, you've got a long list of uh, letters behind your name, Elka, so thanks for joining us here. (laughs) How are you doing this morning? Pretty good. Good. Thanks, Julie. Yes, well, thanks for being on the show with us today. And um, I know we have a lot to talk about. Um, And uh, just to, you know, kind of go back to you and I, we met uh, many, many years ago and um, when you were doing art classes. And uh, I won't say what year, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) it was quite a while ago. It was a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) And um, you've really evolved since um, I first met you. You've... uh, you know, done a lot of um, schooling since then and really kind of um, expanded your, you know, business, not just your creativity, but, you know, everything that you are, are focusing on right now. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about that sure. and, and kind of your journey. So um, so really you're, you're a registered psychotherapist. Um, that's one of your, I guess, uh, your titles. Yeah. And um, also a certified EMDR therapist in Canada and the U.S. And um, and still you do, still do a lot of expressive art consulting as well as is what I understand. They yeah. all they sound like they're separate, though mm-hmm. they're not. Mm-hmm. So and I think, you know, you asked me before, you know, how did some of that piece start? I've always been creative mm-hmm. and intermodal and I've always been interested in you know, writing, painting beading, gardening, <laughs> cooking. I, I just need to do things and make things. I love fixing things, all that. So it all fits. And the interesting part with art therapy and expressive arts therapy, I came to that after I, I produced my book. Mm-hmm. I learned the expressive arts world and that there was actually a degree out there. And so I went back to school. And I really just did one semester at a time. Mm -hmm. It was just so daunting for me. Mm -hmm. However, that's, that's how I did it. And then I knew I needed to get my master's. So I went ahead and did that. And then what I was noticing in my uh, expressive arts therapy practice, and you know, at one point we can talk a little bit about that. What I did notice is that it is about neural pathways and stimulating the brain in a different way. Mm. And a, a lot of people think it's just play, uh, or it's just art, and they, I say just, I put that in front there for a reason because a lot of people don't put a lot of value on that soft, I call it a soft skill, mm-hmm. and it's a skill that actually changes our worldview because it's our perception, it's how we relate to the world, and it really does change people how they look at the world. So mm. then going right into the neuroscience of it <laughs> is your neural pathways do change, and they get stimulated in a way that other things don't stimulate the brain the same way. The same so, way. Yeah, yeah, so it's really fascinating for me. And so working with a lot of trauma people, I was actually sending them away uh, to do EMDR because I'd had that experience. I had it two car accidents pretty close together quite mm-hmm. a few years ago and had the benefit of EMDR. And sometimes the brain gets stuck mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, the two actually, what I found worked really well together. So I didn't. I thought, why am I sending people out of town? It didn't make <laughs> sense to me. When you can do this. <laughs> well, yeah. So that yeah. took another three years to get okay. that certification. So. so can you explain what EMDR is to our sure. listeners? Okay. Sure. It's eye movement reprocessing and desensitization. Mm-hmm. I probably said that wrong because I'm switch things around. But anyways, <laughs> uh, forty years ago, uh, Francine Shapiro. She discovered it and uh, wrote her, uh, what do you say, her doctorate uh, thesis on Mm it. Mm -hmm. And it became very famous uh, for the veterans in the States. So a lot of people uh, equate EMDR to uh, post-traumatic stress and the the, uh, Vietnam veterans. It was uh, very, it may, 
It became very famous with helping the veterans where a lot of these veterans were stuck. So that's where it became uh, well known. The other thing, which is kind of funny, and Francine at this point, she's still alive, wishes she didn't call it that because it has very little to do with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you next. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. So it's actually uh, very simple. It uh, is bilateral stimulation. So it, it stimulates left and right hemisphere. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> And that's the interesting part because uh, they really can't explain exactly what it does in the brain. It does get the brain to unlock memory. So where someone Mm. is traumatized and has a very high disturbance in the memory can bring that disturbance to just a a lousy memory. So um, that's what it's really beneficial. And I tend to use them... uh, uh, when I need to. Mm-hmm. So not everybody requires EMDR. Some people are happier with art therapy. Some people would prefer talk therapy. Right. The client's very individual. So we talk about the possibilities and how do we do this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, everyone's different. Hmm. Interesting. So obviously you, you went to school for quite a few years to yeah. <laughs> get I'm to this t- point tired. in your life. <laughs> But no, I mean that's 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 a challenge in itself, right? And yeah. just and a, and a great accomplishment, obviously. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. So how many how many years did you have to go to school to achieve these um, degrees? I just actually, I think seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, think I lost count at seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting when you say like I'm a lifelong learner and mm-hmm. I'm creative, so and I'm always looking at at you know how can I tweak this? How can I be better at this and I think looking at the therapy is looking at those pieces that made sense for for my practice for here the work that I want to do so yeah I feel like and last year I I got my last accreditation it's an international accreditation and that's the registered expressive arts consultant educator so Mm -hmm. And that feels like that's okay now. You know, I can mm-hmm. take a, a take rest. Take a rest, yeah. Yeah, good. I hope so. <laughs> well, not, and, and it's not really a rest. So anyways, uh, a rest with that that stuff for now. I still take courses. I still do a lot of reading, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, well, we it's do. ongoing learning, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. So I, I went on your website, just so you know. Yeah, and, thank um, you. <laughs> which it's a phenomenal website. And uh there was something in there that said the the profession of psychotherapy is now recognized in the province of Ontario. Yes. So has that been something that is fairly recent or? Yes. Mm-hmm. Actually, with, this is really interesting because when I started the my journey in getting uh, going back to school, and that was with uh, the um, international uh, studies in Toronto. Mm-hmm. They used to call it ISIS, but they don't anymore. Oh, I guess not. Is, <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, yeah, and our neighborhood dog is called Isis. I mean, go figure. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, they did prepare us, and they ran the program like a university program. So okay. everything was accredited, noted. Uh, we had to have, uh, you know, certain hours of super. All these hours were documented in preparation because this college to recognize psychotherapists in Ontario. That's been. Wow, on the go since I'm guessing 2002, maybe 2000. It's mm. been a long time. They thought uh, it would go a lot quicker. However, uh, the reason for that is that uh, what they want the consumer to be comfortable with is that when somebody is registered, mm. that they have done their work, that they've got their training, they've got done their own personal work, that they're accountable, mm-hmm. that they have their um, insurances, all this in place right right okay that's what I was just wondering because it was I was surprised to see that statement there that uh, yeah they actually officially opened in and they're in last April and they're still I think this year now finally getting a board so it's still in process Mm. so it's yeah it's quite a big thing it's been a a long journey I guess huge for that that college for that college college. yeah yeah Mm. Yeah. okay and you you also represent um, uh, another gr- psychology group called Dalton Associates. Yes. So you do you work under them, or you just represent them here in in Muskoka? How does that work? Wow, um, 
it's kind of like a, a separate part of my practice. So okay. I work under them and with them, okay. both. Mm -hmm. And the cool part about that is that people are able to access their extended health care insurance because okay. it's a psychological service. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the 